Okay. Hi, welcome to Sandy Says. My name is Sandy Demeturgic and I'm the Director of Community Engagement at Schizophrenia and Psychosis Action Alliance. Today I will be interviewing Dee Dee Ranahan, author of Sooner Than Tomorrow and Tomorrow Was Yesterday. Could you introduce yourself please, Dee Dee? Hi, Sandy. I'm Dee Dee Ranahan. Like you said, I am the um, author of those two books. I'm also um, the mother of a son who died in 2014 in a hospital psych ward. And he and I fought for so long to get the services he needed and, and to, to give him the life that he wanted. And so that's colored most of my life for the last 30 years. And it's, it's made me most of who I am. Well, thank you so much for being willing to share your story. What in, I, I guess that's what inspired you to collect caregiver stories. In 2016, I launched a blog, Sooner Than Tomorrow, and the thought was to build a platform for my book, Sooner Than Tomorrow. And about the same time, I joined about a half a dozen Facebook support groups and began reading the stories there. It occurred to me that my blog would be much more impactful if it included other people's stories in, in, in addition to just talking about my story and my son's story. So I began to approach people one-on-one, -on -one, excuse me, <laughs> um, to see if they would share their stories. And over about three or four years, of posting two stories a week. I had a nice collection of stories with what I like to call cries from the depths of human souls. These were honest and open and passionate. And I thought these need broader exposure than my blog. And so I collected many of them together into what became the book, Tomorrow Was Yesterday, an explosive first person indictment of the US mental health system, mothers across the nation tell it like it is. And I'm still collecting stories. Anyone who has a story they'd like to share, please send it to me at SoonerThanTomorrow.com. Great, and what awards have you earned? Well, I'm, I'm pleased to say that I've received recently two prestigious awards from the Nautilus Book Awards organization. In 2019, Sooner Than Tomorrow received the gold medal. Um, in the category of memoir. And in 2020, Tomorrow Was Yesterday received the silver medal in the categories of social change and social justice. That's amazing. How hopeful are you that positive changes will be made in the mental health system? Well, we always have to have hope. But I have to say that after 30 years of personal activism and watching things get worse. And then, especially after losing my son in this terrible system, I probably don't have as much hope as I had when I began my advocacy work. What I do have hope in are the younger advocates that I see today, both family members and peer advocates, because they're fighters. And I know even though I've kind of given up on seeing major change in my lifetime, I know they're not going to give up and they're going to fight for the changes we all want. So what changes, if any, do you anticipate within the next 10 years in the mental health system in the United States? It's hard for me to project, partly because serious mental illness interfaces with so many other serious topics. And for years, for whatever reason, it seems to always fall to the bottom of the proverbial heap as far as getting attention is concerned. And if changes too, do come about, they're going to have to be changes that address root causes. If they don't address root causes, they're just political gloss. They're putting Band-Aids on top of a broken system. One change I'm really thinking a lot about is we need to begin treating serious mental illness, medical brain disorders, whatever we end up calling it, we need to treat it like big business with a huge marketing um, budget. I watch 
promotions every day for St. Jude's Hospital, for Shriners, for Save the Animals. We need to do the same thing. And I'm looking for one billionaire. One billionaire could finance a huge marketing campaign that would blitz the media 24 seven. Hmm. So is that the single most important action now that you think can be taken to correct the mental health system in the US? I don't know that, no, I, it's hard to pinpoint one single action, but if I had to pinpoint one, it's um, reclassification mm. of serious mental illness from um, behavioral or pull yourself up by your bootstraps to um, a medical brain neurological disorder. When we change the language, we'll, we'll change the lens through which mental illness is viewed in the, in the judicial system, in the mental health system, in the public's perception. We don't lock up Parkinson's patients who act out. We don't hospital dump dementia, dementia patients who act out. When we change the vocabulary, we'll be bound legally and morally to change how we act. And hopefully we'll be able to attract more research funding to reduce discrimination and treatment and insurance re reimbursement. We have to fight for reclassification. And how can people become advocates? It's not hard to become an advocate. Um, visit websites like NAMI and Treatment Advocacy Center and SBAA and there's wonderful information out there. Uh, join some of these groups, join uh, National Shattering Science Coalition, send stories to soonerthantomorrow.com. I would just say if you're becoming an advocate and you're new at it, don't bite off more than you can chew. Pick an activity that you can sustain for a while because as we, we know, advocacy is not a sprint, it's a marathon. And what do you think about the SNPAA research study on the cost of treating schizophrenia in the USA? I don't know if you were able to review that. I've read that. I totally agree with that. Some of us like to talk about the cost of not caring. You have a house, you let it fall into disrepair until it's a total wreck. And then it's a much bigger project. It's more expensive to fix. Sometimes it can't be fixed. So whether we call it the cost of treatment or the cost of not caring, I totally agree with that concept, and I'm thankful for that report that your organization put out. In the back of your book, Tomorrow Was Yesterday, you have a grassroots five-part plan to address SMI, which stands for se Severe Mental Illness, including needed presidential actions. The plan includes reclassify SMI, reform HIPAA, repeal IMD exclusion, provide a full continuum of care and decriminalize SA. Is there a timeline guidance for each part? I don't think we included a timeline gu uh, guidance in that plan. Um, and I don't include legislative points, usually my blog. I am just one person and I quarterback that plan with over 100 advocates from across the country. We're a loose coalition and we would love it. We would be thrilled if advocacy organizations would read that plan in the back of the book and consider it seriously, get back to us. We'd love to, to collaborate and see if we can bring some of the uh, topics in that plan into fruition. And how are you working with other organizations to see these things be implemented? You, you mentioned some other organizations like NAMI and Treatment Advocacy Center and SNPAA, which is where I'm from. Well, again, I'm not an organization. I'm one person. I, I'm a member of, of a loose coalition of advocates. So um, we just encourage these other organizations to read the plan, to reach out to us to collaborate because we are voices from the trenches. We're, we, we have the lived experience um, as family members and, and some of our members of this coalition, our peers. So reach out to us and we'll work with you to figure out a way to strategize and improve the plan and bring some of the topics in that plan into reality. 
Do you provide legislative updates on your blog at http www.soonerthantomorrow.com? I don't really focus on my blog on legislative updates. Sometimes they're embedded in a story that I post, but that's not really the focus. The focus, and it, when it began, it still is, is just to give people a place to tell their stories. That's wonderful. I found your extended list of SMI needs very interesting and very important. You seem to cover every facet of living with SMI, including housing, AOT, education, and address income issues for people on social security and disability. How can SMPAA work with you in the future to make these things possible? Well, again, I'm one person, I'm a loose part of a loose coalition. Call on us. I can provide all the names. People are out there chomping at the bit to work with these organizations um, about these causes that they really believe in. And, uh, and as I think researching some of these items, I don't, there's 15 items in our extended plan and I don't think any of them need proof of need. I think what they need are research in how to implement them, how to overcome barriers to their implementation, what are the opportunities, and especially how do we garner political will to help make these things happen? Because right now, I don't think we have the political will on the level that we need. Yeah, and I was going to ask about the research that you think needs done, but I think you answered that question about how to, um, and I think that was the purpose from SNPAA of the cost of not caring, as you refer to it as, um, you know, to be able to go to legislatures and say, hey, this is the cost. We've done our work, our homework, you know, and this is where money's being spent. This is whether or not it's effective, you know. So, um, yeah. So did you have anything else to add about the research part? The need for research? Well, like I said, I think most of these topics are pretty self-evident and I think the research is in uh, the implementation. How do we do that? And um, get everybody on the same page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm on the chair of the SNPAA Consumer Advisory Committee, and we discuss SNPAA Board of Direction director action terms. As a caregiver, what would you want to be discussed by peers at the next meeting this month? Well, we all know that every member in an SMI family um, is suffering, and some more than others. I would love to hear a discussion about how do we relieve the stress on families? What, what are the responsibilities of the ill member? What are the responsibilities of the other members? This might include a discussion about anosognosia. How do we understand that? How do we incorporate that into a care plan? how do we put families back together? And this is a lot easier said than done because right now we don't have a mental health system that supports families. Right, and you mentioned anosognosia, which for the people who aren't familiar with the term, it means when you have a lack of insight. I think research has shown about 40% of people with schizophrenia have this symptom of anosognosia. And I know that at SNPAA, we partner with the LEAP people, Dr. Javier Amador and his foundation, uh, the Henry Amador Center, um, to, to help people with training. You know, it's, it's really interesting because um, I answered the helpline, I returned calls and emails uh, from people who were reaching out. And, you know, mentioning anosognosia, they're like, oh my gosh, I've never heard of this before. And it makes sense, you know? So I think, I think understanding the anosognosia part is really important. Even in the mental health system, professionals, a lot of professionals aren't familiar with the term anosognosia. And so it's a huge stumbling block if a family doesn't understand that, if their ill family member doesn't understand that. I mean, you've got to get around that concept in order to start building cooperation, I think. Definitely. Well, do you have any additional comments? 
No, I'm just really appreciative of this chance for us to have this conversation and for your highlighting and bringing attention to our grassroots plan to address um, serious mental illness slash medical brain disorders. Um, and I, I'm grateful for this conversation. And where can people go to get your books? My book is most books, uh, most readily available on amazon.com. Um, if people don't use Amazon, if you walk into most independent bookstores and request the book, they should be able to order it for you. Okay. Well, thank you so much for meeting with me today. I definitely learned a lot from reading the book and, and, you know, like your extended list of things to do. And, um, you know, I used to be a board of directors meeting at S and PAA and, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing to see how many people really want to help. And, you know, with the, the caregivers, I also, contact people who are interested in volunteering or advocacy and trying to you know get get them activated so i'll definitely add your book to my list that's great thanks so much dandy okay well you have a wonderful day and for those of you watching please go to youtube.com and register for our schizophrenia and psychosis action alliance um webinars videos so that you don't miss one in the future thanks bye bye